In this video, I'm going to be recreating one of my favorite scenes of all time from Blade Runner 2049. The cinematography was done by Roger Deakins, absolute legend. So I'm going to try to recreate that scene, not an animation, just like a still scene image uh, using Blender. I remember I tried to do it last year, but it didn't look good. So I feel like I've accumulated enough skills and uh, tools and techniques that can help me to achieve that today. So we will we'll see. If you guys enjoy these type of videos, please let me know. Comment down below. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. First off, we're going to start with our real life human scale mesh bop and add a plane, scale it up a little bit and then directly go to Quixel Bridge Mega Scan. So we can kind of replicate the texture on the floor. Now, here we are in Mega Scan. going to look for dust, dry mud, ground looks similar so let's go ahead create a new material on our plane and just replace the default material with dry mud all right now let's go ahead to render viewport to see what we have it's a bit dark i'm gonna fix that in a bit but for whatever reason mega scan uh, materials that they, they place their nodes uh, in a wrong place so we need to fix that should be good just put normal map to normal map roughness to roughness and now we need to add a sun now we can see more details on the texture. I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit. And as you can see, the texture here is kind of like blended with some other texture. So I'm gonna go to Quixel and add another texture. Soil ground is pretty good, I think. So let's go ahead and rename our main floor and go to soil ground, copy all the not except the output, go back to the main one, which is the floor, and then just paste it and now here we have two materials so what we're gonna do we're gonna mix both of them so we're gonna go ahead and look for mix shader and it's very simple all you need to do is just connect both of them to the mix shader and then connect the shader to the surface here you can see the fact is basically the balance between both shader which one you want to show more but first let's go ahead and fix this material and here what i usually do i connect a color ramp and a noise texture to the fact. Basically, I have a better control over uh, what I can do now. And just by doing this, you can control the amount and the scale of the two shaders and also make it more realistic at the same time. Now we're gonna extend our ground and to do that, go to modifier and then choose array. Here you can extend as much as you want by adding counts. And by default, you have factor X set to one. So keep it at that because as you can see, it's extended forward. Now to extend further to the horizontal side, we're going to add another array and make sure the uh, Y factor is minus one and you can extend as much as you can here. You can basically copy and paste what I did. Looking at the reference, I'm just going to position my camera a bit higher and go to change my dimension of the camera to a more anamorphic look as our reference. Here I'm going to get back to array and extend my horizon of the ground a bit more. All right, now I'm going to get back to Quixel Bridge Mega Scan and bring one of those canyon texture. It's kind of like a rookie uh, 3D asset where I will be able to replicate those uh, small displacement of the texture from our reference. So before anything, I have to fix the shader and also make it a bit darker so it can be blended well with the texture of the ground. To make the ground more realistic, all I'm going to do is position the texture and also duplicate it as much as I can by holding Alt D. That way you store all data in one. And then finally, I'm going to add one of my fog uh, for my fog pack. Uh, this will definitely work. The orange haze, the big size orange haze. You can say it's almost made for this scene. If you're interested, the link will be in the description. Obviously here in the shader, we have to make some adjustment to make it look similar. Here I am trying to get the reference look as much as possible by adding more emission strength and adding more density and just making the color of the orange a little bit darker. Lastly, I want to delete the sun and now it's time to add our character from my newest PNG character packs. This is absolutely one of the best thing you can actually get right now. The link will be in the description and take a look at it. I mean, 
all I needed to do is just add a PNG character. Now keep in mind these are not always great in every scenario. These are great if you want to add silhouettes to your scenes. I'm personally a big silhouette guy. I use a lot of characters that are just silhouette. So I made this pack for myself before anything. So if you are interested, the link will be in the description. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just rescaling my PNG to, to Bob, which is like a human real scale in real life. That way it looks more realistic and it makes sense in perspective wise. Here I'm gonna select my fog and actually bevel it. I wanted to see how it's going to look but the reason I'm doing that is because I want to see a more of a realistic horizon that is blended with the texture. All you need to do is just go to edit mode. Make sure you choose the edges on the top and bottom and just push it aside with your mouse and use middle click to increase the beveling. Now I'll slightly bring down the fog a bit and I think it looks pretty good. Here I'm going to get back to the shader tab and just kind of like play around until I see more similarity with my reference. And here I'm going to duplicate more of this Canyon Rookie texture in the foreground. That way it blends pretty well with a uh, ground texture. Here I can't help but to wonder that I chose a wrong character for this scene. So I'm just gonna go back to my PNG character and choose something that is more similar to my Blade Runner reference. I think this one is pretty cool. All I need to do is just rescale it to a actual human size. So here we are, I'm just gonna hide the previous character. Now I'm gonna set to material preview and actually position the character in the best way possible. Um, and I highly recommend you if you get this PNG pack to use material preview to see what's really going on. All right, so I think we're close to finishing it. But the last thing I want to do, I think I want to add some cast shadow to my foreground. As you can see from the Blade Runner reference, you have some dark uh, vignette uh, in the foreground. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create more of like a cabin or just a blocker for the light because the the light emission with this fog is all over the place so it's like basically everywhere so all i did here is just started with a plane and extended the edges by pressing e and here i'm gonna go to material and just make it a bit dark and now you can simply see the cast shadow has been applied and it's not even visible within the camera that's the best part and uh here if you want to just you know see through you can easily go to viewport visibility and change the display to wire. We are officially done and now it's time to render. After the render, I went to Lightroom and I did some slight adjustment. So here is the comparison. The Blade Runner scene and my attempt on recreating it. Obviously the Blade Runner scene is still so much better, but hey, at least I tried. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please comment down below and suggest me your favorite scene from any movie. I'll try to recreate it for the next series. And if you want to dive deep in my philosophy behind my creations and how I do it and a long deep dive of my creative workflow then I highly encourage you to check out either my Skillshare if you have a subscription already or one-time payment on Gumroad the link will be in the description and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one